Okay, today I'm going to talk about the benefits of communal living and communal oversight. So uh, the urban design to achieve communal living is structures that have uh, open ends uh, to accessible public areas. So ideally um, along public transit routes and um, towards shared gardens so that uh, people are um, citizens, children, dogs, uh, elderly have easy access to public spaces and those are safe from heavy traffic um, for the interests of especially the young. And when there's uh, shared green spaces, then um, those green spaces also act as carbon sinks. And so um, what people do is they have like access to uh, public amenities such as park benches, shades uh, under trees, and maybe public toilets or drinking fountains and walkways um, to facilitate their health and also being outdoors, the amount of time that they spend in nature. Um, Time in nature and in green spaces contributes to holistic health, um, its ecological well-being. Um, it's proven, the, proven to uh, bring down stress levels and contribute to human health. Um, also, green spaces act as carbon sinks um, to uh, mitigate the effects of emissions in the atmosphere. Um, blue and green infrastructure can absorb carbon in the atmosphere. So uh, examples of green structure are green roofs, um, green uh, playgrounds and facades. Blue infrastructure is uh, water fountains, open streams, natural water elements to mitigate uh, the buildup of nitrogen because any kind of still uh, water element that's manufactured has the risk of um, nitrogen buildup, which is also uh, deadly for um, water habitats. And it's um, it also uh, prone to building pollution. So um, those are aspects of blue infrastructure. I've already mentioned examples of green infrastructure, as well as the benefits of green spaces, but uh, now I'm going to go uh, into the benefits of communal spaces and how to actually achieve that. Um, so as mentioned uh, before, there's the benefits uh, and there's also additional benefits such as um, mitigating loneliness, uh, mitigating depression through promoting uh, social interaction and meaningful social, social relationships. And uh, so it was actually documented during the Corona time that um, loneliness went up about 25% due to isolation policies. So uh, it's a fact that meaningful social interaction can mitigate um, loneliness and uh, related psychological distresses. So how do we achieve for the frequency or increase in, um, of meaningful interaction? Uh, social interaction can be achieved through, again, the build, development of public spaces and also um, walkways so that the walkways intersect with um, important elements such as uh, groceries and um, important um, you know, drugstores, um, services, restaurants, and um, schools, kindergartens and housing. So all of these have to be connected through walkways. Um, perhaps I, through from a city center uh, spiraling outwards, but also the green spaces have to be there as well. So um, what is needed along with walkways? Um, it's less uh, streets and so more bike lanes and more parking for bikes as well. Um, more a closer or clustered uh, social elements, um, clustered urban elements uh, to facilitate ease of accessibility and um, also public transportation uh, that is along housing routes and that is um, accessible and affordable. So policies can of course um, support and supplement all of these, any of these aspects. Um, but also 
uh, urban design. Uh, so planners, urban planners have a very important role in this, um, as well as citizens through participatory planning, through getting involved in the polit 